Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Ultra Series Circuit. We are getting very close to closing up this series and crowning our Ultra Series Champion. But before we get to the finals, we've got a few more rounds to get through. And last episode we had our group stages, we whizzed through those and we had the top cut announced and also the top 8 playoff places between our 4 players going into this round in today's episode. So we're going to feature one match from that playoff section of the tournament and it will be between Salkran and Costa, the other match Will versus Johnny. Unfortunately there was no replay there so we couldn't feature that match which is a bit of a shame but we will be announcing the winner of that match and announcing our final top 8 going into the next stage of this tournament before we things really heat up for us going into the last stages of this event. So without further ado, like I say, we're going to be featuring Salkran versus Costa. There's a lot on the line going Going into this match, whoever makes it out on top goes through into the top eight stages of this tournament and everything from here on out is a knockout stage tournament so everything is on the line, every player, every single turn of these matches so without further ado, congratulations to every single one of you that has got this far, I hope you guys at home are enjoying it, drop a like on the video if you enjoy this sort of content and let me know who you'd like to see. Winning this Ultra Series tournament, there's some incredible prizes on the line as well as those very valuable Flinch Squad points that go towards the Invitational which will be a live stream event very soon so I'll keep an eye out for dates with when that will be that will feature all of our top players throughout the, the 2019 season from the Sun Series, Moon Series and Ultra Series all competing for that ultimate title that they'll take away at the end of the season, crown the ultimate 2019. Pokemon champion. So, without further ado, let's get into this one today. We're going to kick off with Salkran versus Costa. So we've got Costa on the top of our screen here, Salkran on the bottom of the screen. Costa going to lead out with Sogaleo and Tapu Fini here as we see Salkran lead out with Lunala and Tapu Lele. So we will see the Tapu Lele Psychic Terrain activate first and then you know it's going to happen. It's going to get overwritten by this Tapu Fini's Misty Terrain. Always the beauty about Tapu Fini keeping that terrain control and then the Sogaleo is in a little bit of uh, an awkward position with this Lunala out on the field as well for Salka and we do see the Tapu Lele just protect here the Sogaleo gonna follow suit with a protect as we are gonna see the Lunala go for that Moongeist beam into it's not into the Sogaleo though nice play here from Salka and predicting that protect from the Sogaleo thinking it probably switch out and going for damage into that Tapu Fini here as we see a light screen fight out from the Tapu Fini so a really nice play in return from Costa bolstering those special defenses on his side of the field making that Sogaleo a little bit more protected going into this next turn. Tabulele going to switch out here, threatened from that Sogaleo as we see the Kyogre hit the field from Salka. Now going to Primal Revert and activate that once horrible pink Kyogre into the magnificent black and gold variant here as it takes the field and activates that Primordial Sea bringing the rain to the field going into this next turn. So we are going to see the Sogaleo retreat, doesn't want to take any risks, just want to stick around for later. Obviously a Moongeist Bean could potentially be coming into that slot as well as we see the Incineroar now hit the field for Costa, getting that Intimidate onto both these special attack, it's not going to matter too much but it's that Intimidate and Fake Out support fake out support that's going to be so important the next turn. We are going to see a Moongeist Beam now fired off from this Lunala into that Incineroar slot and not do too much damage there. So a nice switch there as a Heal Pulse comes out from this Tapu Fini into the Incineroar just to make sure that it is sticking around and full of beans going into this next turn as we see the Lunala now threatened by that Incineroar wants to preserve itself for later switches out as we see a really nice play here from Salkran gonna get this psychic terrain onto the field gonna overwrite the ability of that Incineroar to get the fake out it does go for it blocked by the psychic terrain as a water spout is fired off from this Kyogre gonna be enough to take down this Incineroar by a long shot and do some nice damage to this Tapu Fini at the same time so we see the Incineroar go down here for Costa really nice play here from Salkran it's nature's madness coming out from this Tapu Fini going to be into what was the Lunala slot to try and break that Shadow Shield and in, into the Tapu Lele here as Rayquaza now hitting the field for Costa going to overwrite the rain that is on the field from that Primordial Sea with the airlock ability it has active and now we can probably see it's going to 
know, a um, Mega Evolve as we see the Kyogre switch out. The rain does disappear, so Sakura wanted to keep that in check for later as the Salamence now hitting the field. Gonna cycle out an all important Intimidate onto this Rayquaza now, reducing that attack stat by one stage as we are gonna see the Rayquaza Mega Evolve and uh, turn into this Mega Rayquaza now, threatening big damage onto the Tapu Lele. But if the Tapu Lele is scarfed on Sakura inside of the field, it could potentially pack. So, you know, snipe some damage onto it before it can actually move, but it depends on what build this Tapulele is. We're going to see a crunch, though, come out from the Rayquaza. I'm going to opt for that into the Tapulele. Not quite enough after this Intimidate, though, so going to stick around for a bit longer. Side shock coming out from the Tapulele into this Tapu Fini, and it is enough even behind the light screen. Going to pick up the knockout there and take down that Tapu Fini and remove any future semblance from that misty terrain coming back on to disrupt the psychic terrain on the field right now we do see the sogaleo take its place on the stage now for costa as the salamence decides to mega evolve and bring out the wings as it is going to threaten maybe speed control but just going for a double edge now straight into that rayquaza and do some nice damage there as well taking a little bit of recoil damage in the process with another crunch coming out from this rayquaza trying to suspectly catch out maybe a Lunala switch in here for that Tapu Lele but takes it and goes down as a trick room now set up from this Sogaleo as we do see the dimensions twisted and um, turned on their head the light screen does wear out as the Kyogre now hits the field and the Kyogre you think it will under speed this Rayquaza does it under speed the Sogaleo though but Salkran sitting in not a bad position we don't know the speed tiers of each Pokemon so we can't say for, for sure here but we do actually see a forfeit here from Costa, Salkran taking game one, Costa just setting up the trick room and it may be backfiring on him there, which was a bit unfortunate, so we will go straight into game two, again we're going to see Costa on the top of your screen, can he switch things up here to just overcome some of the threats here from Salkran's side of the field, the Lunala putting on a lot of pressure on that Sogaleo, and the trick room there not really benefiting anything on his side of the field, so maybe he wants to bring something that does benefit from that trick room going into this game too, we are going to see a little bit of a switch up from Salkran as well, bringing the Toba de Mario, the Lunala lead here with that fake out, turn one going into the Tapu Fini, going to shut that down as the Moon Guy is being fired off once again from this Lunala, is it into that Tapu Fini slot as it was in game one, or is he going to target that Sogaleo here, be a big turn into the Fini, just a safe play there, nice damage as well into that Tapu Fini, as a trick room now set up once again from this Sogaleo and turn the dimensions a lot quicker than in game one, so will this benefit him going into game two? Lunala gonna retweet now, uh, retweet, no, retreat as the Tapulele hits the field um, and retweeting about it as well because the psychic terrain activates overwriting that misty terrain as the nature's madness comes out but the Lele does avoid and we are gonna see a Z move from this Sogaleo, we'll have to cut this right now and we'll come back to where it does hit into. So the signature Z move into the Tapu Lele going to be super effective, do huge damage and pick up a huge knockout there. Taking a big advantage early on for Costa, removing that Tapu Lele from the field. It's come in, got its terrain up and a Zing Zap now in response from this Togonomaru. Going to be into that Tapu Fini and remove it from the field. So level all level going into this next turn, but the Trick Room still in effect. The Incineroar now going to hit the field. Hasn't got access to that fake out like it would pretty much probably really rely on right now and would like access to as we see the Kyogre come in from Salkran. You've got to think Salkran's still in not too bad a position going into this next turn. Does threaten a big KO onto the Incineroar with these Origin Pulse or Water Sparks that could be potentially thrown out from it. Sogaleo could you know, reveal wide guard that could shut that ability down from the Kyogre and the Togodemaru not in too bad a position either, but does have to be fearful of a potential superpower from the Sogaleo that could do a lot of damage if left unchecked. Sogaleo gonna actually switch out here. We're gonna see it return to the trainer as the Gastrodon now hits the field for Costa and a Snarl coming out from Incineroar, the ideal option now for Costa to shut down and prevent this Kyogre from being too dominant going into this next turn as it does drop the special attack there origin pulse coming out boosting the storm drain ability on that gastrodon not affecting it at all but will do some nice damage to this incineral here as we do see it take it down just to below about 25% activating that 50% berry here and Incineroar going to be able to get back a lot of that health that it's just lost through that Aguave berry as the Zing Zap goes into the Gastrodon slot and not affected because of that ground typing. Now Kyogre going to protect this next turn. I wonder if 
Salkrin can get through these trick room turns. You've got to worry about what this Gastrodon can do. And has he got answers to it? We are going to see an Earth Power straight into the Togodomaru here. Pick up the knockout. And Togodomaru going down with just the Lunala in the back now. And that Snarl coming out from the Incineroar. With Trick Room still in effect, you've got to worry about this Snarl from the Incineroar. It is going to hit and do super effective damage. Break the Shadow Shield on this Lunala as well as we see a Scald coming out from the Gastron breaking that Shadow Shield. The Snarl followed up. Going to further weaken the Kyogre and do some nice damage to the Lunala. Weakening these special attackers on Salkrin's side of the field. So doing a lot of work this Incineroar as an Origin Pulse comes out. Storm Drain boosting that Gastrodon again taking its special attack up to plus two now as an Origin Pulse. Is it going to be enough to take down this Incineroar? Probably not after the second Snarl. Just hanging on there as a Moon Guys Beam coming out from this Lunala. Is it into that Gastrodon to try and start getting some damage onto that? Because the Kyogre at the minute cannot and will not be able to do very much to that Gastrodon outside of Ice Beam. The dimensions now turn back to normal, but you're kind of locked into needing to deal with this Incineroar before you think about concentrating down on that Gastrodon. You've got to go for a water type attack with this Kyogre. The Moon Guys Beam coming into the Gastrodon there. Another Origin Pulse coming out from the Kyogre. Is it enough? To, and does it connect? It does connect onto the Incineroar, and this will be enough. And uh, open the door for the Sogaleo to come back in but after these snarls Salkrin's Pokemon not in the best position to be taking um, and giving out the damage that he needs to if he could remove the Sogaleo quickly he might have a better chance at dealing with this Gastrodon but on plus two it's going to be throwing out some huge damage going into the last stages of this game Moongas Beam coming out now from this Lunala it is outspeeding everything on the field it is going to be able to hit into that Gastrodon, not the Sogaleo, and the Ice Beam going for the double up. Is this enough? Can he get the double up into this slot? Oh, not quite enough, but he does get the freeze. That's huge here. As we see the Gastrodon frozen, it is frozen solid, stays frozen solid this turn, and opens the door for Salkrim, but a Trick Room being set up now from this Sogaleo is going to turn the dimensions, and maybe the Sogaleo was the slot that you would have wanted to target into. Hope that you got enough out of it. As we see the Gastrodon thaw out and get this Earth Power into the Kyogre now, doing some huge Huge damage there as a Sun Seal Strike following up from this Sogaleo now. Is it into this Lunala slot? You've got to think if you can remove the Lunala now, you've got no way to deal with this Gastrodon and you will be able to probably close this match up as the Lunala is the target of the Sun Seal Strike. Goes down and the Ice Beam coming up from the Kyogre, but maybe just one turn too late. You need that Gastrodon to stay frozen here get taken down this turn then you could probably deal with this Sogaleo with your Kyogre unfortunately not going to be the case there's a superpower coming out from Costa side of the field well played from Costa and bringing this one up fainting the Kyogre and tying the set up one and one so we will be going to a game three to decide who will take their place in the top eight of the ultra series tournament so we will get straight into game three the action is heating up cannot wait to get into it as we go into it now we see costa again on the top of your screen sending out sogaleo tapu finny here and we will see salkrin send out salamence and lunala here what are we going to see salkrin changing things up here obviously that intimidate not affecting sogaleo because of that full metal body there on Sogaleo. Not reducing the special attack. We see the Misty Terrain setting up now from this type of Finny. Can Salkrin prevent the Trick Room getting set up from the Sogaleo? That is the big thing. We are going to see the Salamence now go for that Mega Evolution, turn into Mega Salamence, bring the wings. That's what we say. And we are going to see the turn one play out. Moon Guys Beam, is he targeting that Finny now? He's targeted the Finny the last two games. Is he calling the bluff and going for that Sogaleo? Here it is. The big Big question he's gone into the Sogaleo is it enough it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout but does enough damage for a hyper voice from the Salamence to pick up the knockout onto the Sogaleo do some nice damage to that Tabu Finney and deny that Trick Room and that is the big big play here for Salkrin going into the rest of his turn a heal pulse as well coming out from the Tabu Finney so a completely dead turn from Costa's end unfortunately there if he'd just been able to hang on from that combination and there is no coming back from that Costa feels like that is the end of it and we do see the forfeit Salkrin progressing on to the top eight of this tournament massive congratulations to Salkrin big congratulations for Costa for getting so far in this tournament running 
so deep and doing so well. And in the other match, we saw Will triumph over Johnny. So Will moving on with Salker into the top eight. And you can see the top eight players on your screen now. And we will be covering the top eight matches going forward in next week's coverage of the Ultra Series tournament. So very exciting, guys. Amazing game for us to, to have and catch up with everything again today as we move into the top eight of the tournament next week. We'll be featuring some really, really high quality matches between our players going into the last stages of this Ultra Series tournament. As you can see, we've got Shade, Yorine, Stu, Chansey, Mansi, Salkrin, Will, and a flurry of other players going through in this top eight of the tournament. So it's going to be very exciting. Do make sure you tune in. Get that notification bell on so you know when these uh, episodes will be going up. And I will see you all for the next one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you then. So until then, bye-bye.